Hello, what is up? My name is Liana. I am a clicker trainer and rabbit behaviorist. Behind me are Pepper and Wally eating their breakfast right now. We are the Bunnies Brigade and we're here to get people rethinking rabbit care. First of all, I want to apologize for being so quiet for so long. I'm so sorry. I've had a pretty rough summer that's left me kind of emotionally drained and I, I just needed to take some time to recharge and you know, perhaps I'll tell you about that another time. Not only that, I have also been using this time to come up with some exciting new stuff like building a website for you guys, which I will be sure to let you know about once that's complete. Anyway, let's get on with this video and today I want to chat about spaying and neutering because it recently occurred to me that there's still a lot of misinformation out there about fixing our rabbits. So I want to set the record straight. I'm going to be honest with you about the pros and the cons, and yes, there are cons. Life is not always black and white, and there is one particular circumstance where, in my opinion, there is perhaps no need to do it. <gasps> Controversial opinion! What? I will get to that later in the video. So basically, I was doing some research whilst coming up with this video, and I was quite shocked to find that a lot of people think we spay and neuter to prevent breeding and that was the one and only reason we would ever want to fix our rabbits or our cats and dogs even. And I was kind of annoyed at first. I thought it was shallow-minded. Um, but then I took a step back. I realized, oh my God, um, <laughs> that is what I used to think. You know, way back 12, 13 years ago before I started connecting with my rabbit, really connecting with her and understanding her behavior. So this isn't shallow-minded. This is just another one of those things we don't all automatically know because there's not enough people explaining it to us. So here we go. What are all the pros of spaying and neutering? Yes, of course, it is an enormously important thing that we prevent accidental litters. Rabbits are the poster children of breeding and overpopulation, and any rescue will preach to you how serious a problem rabbit breeding is. It's a serious problem for cats and dogs also, as well as many popular pets. All you have to do is visit the shelter to see for yourself how overrun they are. It's heartbreaking to see so many animals waiting for their forever homes. If you have more than one rabbit or are planning to adopt a second, you must neuter them all or they will mate. And does are capable of something called superfetation, which means they can carry two litters at the same time. They can have a second pregnancy while still pregnant with the first, and a third while still carrying the second, and so on and so forth. And you're looking at an average of six kits in a litter, but it's possible to get anywhere up to 14 kits in one litter. So yeah, do the math on that. Now, the flip side of this argument is my rabbits are the same gender. They can't mate or I only have one rabbit and they're not like dogs where they're always meeting other dogs or cats who roam around away from home every day. So here's reason number two behavior. This is the one that is most overlooked. The one that as a trainer initially annoyed me to find so many people weren't aware of. And there are so many components to this reason that I'm going to break down for you now. Bonding. My rabbits are the same gender. They can't mate. Okay. First of all, are you sure? So many cases of accidental pregnancies come from people thinking they have two boys or two girls because that's what they were told when they got them or they've just incorrectly sexed them themselves. It's very easy to incorrectly sex a rabbit, especially when they're babies. Males often retract their testicles when they're nervous and believe it or not, rabbits get nervous when you pick them up and prod their genitals. Who would have thought? They don't have obvious penises like dogs do. So when you're sexing, you're looking to see an O shape or a slit shape and it's small. So bonding, regardless of gender, it is highly unlikely for your rabbits to form a successful and lasting bond if they are not fixed. Even if you do consider your unfixed rabbits bonded, I would still advise not leaving them alone unsupervised. Unbonded rabbits are very territorial 
and very hormonal. They are more unpredictable and could fight each other completely out of the blue. Trying to bond two rabbits who are complete strangers, especially if one is being brought into another's already established home, will likely be impossible and completely uncontrollable. So if you are planning on bonding your rabbits or getting a friend for your current bunny, then you must neuter or spay them and then wait four to six weeks, some say eight weeks, before you begin the process. This is to allow hormones to settle. And for a detailed breakdown of the whole bonding process, check out this video. Bad litter habits can be another behavioral problem in unfixed rabbits. It's not that you can't litter train unfixed rabbits, it's not really any more difficult than training a fixed rabbit. As I've said before, litter training is mostly just taking advantage of a rabbit's very natural instinct to toilet in one place. But there can be problems with the territorial behavior that is heightened in rabbits who are not neutered or spayed. Although an unfixed rabbit may reliably use his or her litter box, there's a good chance they may randomly pee elsewhere. And it'll often be places they decide they're rather fond of and want to claim for themselves, and um, particularly when those places are outside their usual area. Now, unneutered males may also even spray their pee and they can spray it really high if they want to. They do it when they're hormonal or upset or both, and it, it smells bad, like kind of like skunk. So in order to avoid any of these bad litter habits, you will want to get your rabbit fixed. Now, due to the raging hormones of an intact bunny, they can show seemingly unfounded aggression. And sometimes it can be quite severe, lunging, biting, and even chasing you and they can draw blood if they want to. And I've heard of cases in which they will latch on and refuse to let go. This is not okay. It's not okay if you have children and it's not okay if you have other pets. It's these cases that often lead people to abandon their pets. And in my mind, I would go so far as to say this is as serious an issue as having an unwanted litter. So why is behavior sometimes overlooked and left out of discussions on whether you should neuter your rabbit or not? In most cases, aggression can be corrected by spaying or neutering. Of course, there are cases of aggression in rabbits who have been fixed, but that is a fear response from being mishandled, mistreated, or misunderstood, whether present or in their past. And in these cases, it is always possible to work with your rabbit to overcome it. Then there's destructive behavior, which is again, more frequent and relentless in unfixed rabbits. Again, it's their hormones making them feel the compulsive need to burrow a nest, as well as a, a feeling of heightened frustration. And whilst spaying and neutering is unlikely to completely eradicate destructive behavior, it can certainly help to calm it and make it easier to divert your rabbit's attention. Then you can more easily train them to chew and dig the things they're allowed to. Click on the card for our video on how to do that. That is how neutering and spaying can change your rabbit's behavior for the better. Now let's talk about health. And this one is a big deal and it's actually really great to see there has been increasingly more awareness for it. According to research, 60% of unspayed female rabbits over three years of age will have developed uterine cancer. And the figure gets closer to 80% in rabbits over six years. By those statistics, almost every unspayed female will die of uterine cancer if they live long enough. We all want the best for our rabbits. We all want them to live long, healthy lives. So the way I see it, when it comes to females, even if you just have one girl as good as gold, perfect litter habits, there is no choice but to spay her. But I don't know, you tell me your thoughts. Leave them in the comments below. Now, unneutered males. They too are at risk of testicular cancer, but it's much less common. So. Do you need to neuter your solo male rabbit? Here's where I get controversial. Perhaps not. If you have 
one male rabbit and do not plan on getting a second, which in itself can be argued as depriving him of his base needs. If you have no other pets and no children, if he shows no signs of aggression, doesn't destroy your house and doesn't pee in random places or spray you, that's a lot of boxes he has to tick. Then perhaps in your situation, the cons will outweigh the pros and you'll want to leave it. But let's see. Here's the argument that is made against neutral. The risk of anesthesia is the main concern for people considering the pros and cons of neutering. Especially as there seems to be so many stories of people losing their rabbits during surgery. Yes, rabbits are at higher risk under anesthesia than cats and dogs, but overall the risk is still low. In the UK, the fatality rate for healthy rabbits is around 0.7%. I couldn't find and corroborate any US statistics from my research, but so long as you have an experienced exotics vet perform the surgery and your bunny is in good health, which an experienced vet will tell you if they're not, there is very little to worry about. I think it can sometimes seem like there are so many cases of things going wrong because like how often do people announce to the world when things go boringly according to plan? Just make sure you're asking your vet how often they perform surgeries on rabbits and make sure they are satisfied with the all-round health of your little one before you agree to the surgery. Then there's the expense of it all. And being alarmed by the cost of spaying and neutering, especially for my US viewers, is totally understandable. It's so important to make sure you budget for a neuter if you know they're not already fixed. The surgery can set you back around $500 here in Southern California and in many parts of the US actually. Dogs and cats are a big financial responsibility and rabbits are no exception, particularly in America, where veterinary care for rabbits is much more specialized than it is in, say, England, where I'm from. And it is therefore charged at a premium price here. The bottom line is, if you're not able to make the financial commitment, then it's best to wait until you are better positioned to do so. In order to save some money, you can, and to be honest, should, adopt from a shelter or rescue where the rabbits are all fixed before they are released for adoption. They should have also been vaccinated and given a full wellness check, but make sure you ask for their medical history to be sure that is the case. And Although this does avoid the expense of neutering, remember, you still need to be ready and able to afford any vet visits that might arise or else be able to make regular pet insurance payments. Lastly, there is a concern about neutering causing big changes to your rabbit's personality, as well as a worry about hormone imbalances being detrimental to their well-being. Well, first of all, yes, there are obviously hormone changes that happen when reproductive organs are removed from an animal, and there will be a spike in your rabbit's hormones post-surgery. This can cause them to be more easily irritated, territorial, and in some cases show aggression where they may not have before. But this will all pass after a month or two, once their hormones naturally balance out and settle down. The body is very good at adapting and adjusting. And I doubt that spaying and neutering causes any lasting mental or emotional damage to our pets. I, and I would argue as well that they are actually emotionally better off without the raging hormones that drive their need to mate, nest, and defend. Does, for example, will frequently have false pregnancies where they tear the fur from their dewlap because their hormones are telling them they need to build a nest when they don't at all. I can only think that must be stressful and confusing for them and surely it can't be a comfortable way to spend your life. When it comes to personality changes, I'm not gonna lie, there may be certain unique, adorable rituals your rabbit does that may be lost after their spay or neuter, but that doesn't mean they've lost their personality or that they're not as happy as they were. It just means that they did those things because they were feeling hormonal. Sometimes we as humans project this 
idea of them being happy because they're hopping around all cute with a toy or a bunch of hay in their mouth or they're circling your feet and softly grunting as you walk. I think it's these moments where we have to ask ourselves, are we worried about these little quirks going away for their sake or ours? Because trust me, Wally and Pepper have very unique personalities and my Jasmine before was very different again. They still do hilarious and adorable things and what's even more rewarding is knowing they do the things they do because that is who they truly are and not what their hormones are dictating they should do. I think it's very clear where my opinion lies when it comes to spaying and neutering, but there are the facts, as they are, perhaps with a little bias. But the way I see it, the pros far outweigh the cons. It's certainly a no-brainer if you have a female rabbit, or if you have more than one rabbit and you want them to have a lasting bond. And it... Do you want cuddles? Do you... He accidentally pressed his talking pet button. It's really only special cases of very laid back, well behaved, lone males where you might not want to put him through the trouble. For me, I'd just rather be safe than sorry. And besides, if we all just adopt instead of shop, is there even any need for this debate? Wait, is this video pointless? Are we just wasting our time making this? Regardless. If you have found this useful, please give us a thumbs up. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Maybe take a look at some of our other videos. And if you like our content, don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell. And we will see you in the next one. Bye.